good? <laughs> Bro, what's wrong with you? I don't know. I've just been smoking way too much weed. Oh. Cops come get him. He lives on 99245 420 Board, Boardfish Road. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that's God. totally where he lives. <laughs> Alright, guys, so I'm joined here with Game Productions. What's up, Ryan? And we are going to be doing a reaction to these true horror stories animated. Uh, just so you know, I'm not doing this just out of arrogance. He allowed me to. Um, if you guys want some merch, which I'm wearing it right now, uh, there you go. It's a, it was in celebration of me hitting 100 subs a few months ago. So if you want some, just uh, hit me up on Instagram or Snapchat. Are you gonna? He might put those in the links in the description or something. Yeah. So go check it out if you want any. All right. After this video, I'm immediately putting back putting my hat back on. Yeah, he has no hat. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Spoopy. This happened when it was our school's camping day. All the grades went to each other's places, and our teacher had taken the six students to this large site that was quite cheap. It started off all right. I got a room with some of my friends at the time, and my closer friends were in the next room. The first incident started when I was the only one in my room, still packing mine and the other people's stuff away. I was on the bottom bunk, letting my mate take the top. When I looked up was some sentence, and it said, Hello, you are going next, with a all creepy right. smile. On the second day, we all went outside. There were teepee tents next to a field. I hung out in one with one of my friends. Some others hung out in a second tent. But in the third tent, I saw a shadow with a knife. I told the teacher and another student, who went in, but didn't come out. But nobody believed me, and there was nobody inside the tent. I thought something was really weird. On the third day, three of my roommates were out on a day trip with some others, which I was going to do the next day. I had done a mud course, and after that, I decided to have a shower. The water was black and disgusting which added to this horrible week. First off, that does not look like black. That looks like very dark gray. Bro, if my shower ever came out with that color, I just wouldn't shower. Yeah, I would just be like, nope, freak this. I'd rather, I'd rather bathe in the woods. Seriously, like, bro. All of a sudden, when I was still in the shower booth, the doorknob was shaking. I screamed, and when I got out, I saw a handwriting you won't leave alive on the wall then i saw a shadow in the window if i were to see that my ass would immediately just go to mexico <sighs> like yay i deal with this you know what that actually kind of reminds me way back like about a year ago or so i was at my sister's wedding and we were there like until like 11 and once it got dark out, my cousins and I, we were just hanging out because it was in like a cabin kind of area, but it was a nice place. Yeah. Uh, and then literally uh, we went upstairs because there was two floors. There was the down, there was like a dance floor and then it went up into like just like the bar area. There was nobody in there. So we were just hanging out in there. I look over and then I literally see somebody just peeking in the window just like this. I was like, oh my God. And I ran. <laughs> and then I came back up and he wasn't, and he wasn't there. But that fool looks like a lady or a bit or a dude with long hair. Yeah. My room's door was locked while I was having a shower, so no one could enter in our room. The fourth day, I was taking a walk someplace that no one knew, and Why? then I Why? found a huge... You do that after Why? you see a figure with a knife. Yeah, are you kidding me? Are you that stupid? Huge knife and blood-soaked clothes. See? I Why is there no blood on a knife? Yeah, seriously. Wait. Seriously? No blood I was taking a walk someplace that no one knew. And then I found a huge knife and blood soaked Boy, clothes. Boy, there is no blood on that knife. I just there hoped that this stupid and terrible camp would finish soon. Then the last night, I woke up in the middle of the night because I saw the same shadow leaving my room. But your eyes were closed. And there was a knife on the floor. Again. With these knives, is this is this guy Edward Knife Hands? Exactly. I couldn't sleep the rest of that night. 
Is that what you mean? Yeah. The last day, I was left to clean the room and set the beds for the students, whoever would use it next. When I was about to finish, I saw the door and it said, You are lucky you survived. I didn't have enough time. But next, I will not let you go. Okay, what do you mean you, ha you did not have enough time? You were peeking through him at the window. Yeah, seriously. And then you were right next to him while he was sleeping. Yeah. You could have killed him while he was sleeping. Yeah, seriously, you could have just killed him while he was sleeping. That's kind of a dumb verse right there. Exactly. I panicked, so I ran from that creepy room. Finally! I told my teacher. However, by the time we got back, it was gone. So you're high. As I got onto the bus, yeah, I looked in the window of that something. room, and the shadow stared back at me, with a decapitated head in one hand, and in the other hand, the same knife I had seen twice. Later, when I came back from the camp, I heard about that place. It was an orphanage and a mental institution that had many mysterious deaths. What? To this day, I wondered what would have happened if I'd spent longer than five days at that place. You would have died. Yeah, seriously. And why would a school even do take him there exactly. if they <coughs> if they knew that they, that this would happen? Exactly. So All right. Good. That's the end of that story, bro. That was dumb. Yeah, that was dumb. I'm not ever gonna go out to be a killer because that's just stupid to do. But yeah, I'm still a better killer. I think I'd be a better killer than that dude was because. Okay. He was sleeping and he, he didn't kill him. Yeah, seriously. How about let's watch 15 horror stories animated. Alright. Alright. This was back in uh, 2019. That's 42 minutes long. I don't give a shit. Oh my god. This incident took That's place in Dubai when I was story. 10. Alright. I used to go to my friend's apartment to play with him at the time of vacation. Okay, I already know this, bu this is gonna be crap because of the budget. Yeah. One day, as usual, I went to his room to play. After playing for a long time, I went to the bathroom. While I was washing my face off and other things, things suddenly started to fall down. I was surprised. I thought maybe it was because of wind, but when I checked the surroundings, I found out there wasn't any window in the bathroom. I got out and told my friend the incident. He told me that there's a ghost in his room. I freaked out. At first, I didn't believe him. However, then next, his mother and father explained the paranormal activities which had taken place there since they moved into that place. And move out. His father was making a burrito in the kitchen one day, and suddenly a call came for him. He kept the burrito on the stove and attended the call. Why would you keep it? Why do we need to know that he kept the burrito on the stove? Unless that comes into play later. Yeah, seriously, why? We don't need to know that. Is it supposed to be set on fire? We After attending the call, when he came back, he was surprised to find out that the burrito was burning down in flames from the stove. But he said he was definitely sure that he hadn't turned on the stove yet. Another day, while his mother was cooking food, suddenly she felt as if someone was choking her by holding her throat from behind, and she fled out of the kitchen with a scream. The same day, while they were sleeping at night, they heard sounds from the bathroom. And when they checked it out, they found all the things, such as bottles of toilet cleaner and other things, had been scattered inside the bathroom. And that story made me suddenly freeze. Looks like Steve. This was the exact same incident which occurred to me. They had called some group of ghost hunters and... <laughs> Ghostbusters! No. Why? Why Ghostbusters? And ...did some sort of rituals and found out that two people had been murdered by someone. To know if this was true, they went to the flat owner, and he said just the same thing like the ghost hunters, and apologized for giving them this room. Apologizing? They what? Why would you apologize for something that you know that was gonna happen? What if he's the killer? That's just kind of a dumbass right there. Moved out the next day after my visit to their house. Well, to this day, I still wonder what would have happened to me if I had stayed there for some more time. Too scary for me, I can't watch anymore. My old haunted house. That wasn't scary at all. Yeah, seriously. My name is Max. I live in the center of the city now. But a no one gives a shit! A few years back, I lived in an old house on a somewhat sketchy street. Okay. 
But that doesn't mean I was poor. The house was ugly from outside, and it was built before World War II, but clean, warm, and cozy inside, although many people died in it there. I Why would you even do that? Why would you even move into a house like that? If you know somebody died in there, then don't move there. Yeah, or just put a bunch of crosses inside your house. Exactly. Like, bro, people are I always believed in ghosts because of all the weird incidents that happened. Like one time, at night, me and my mom were sitting in a room. It was pitch black outside the room we sat in. Suddenly, we heard someone was tripping over, falling in the kitchen. We also heard things like plates fall down and shatter. But when we walked outside, nothing was there. Everything was in its place, and we were so scared about what was going on. A few years later, I had a dream. Me and my mom were walking down a path, and suddenly we stopped, and I heard a voice saying, Bridge. I felt something knocking on my back three times, and I woke up scared. Nothing was there, so I didn't think of it that much and went back to sleep. However, after that night, this dream appeared again and again. The voice said various things that I don't remember, and one time it said something about my mom's death. It always ended with something knocking on my back three times. It was creepy. One time, me and my mom sat in a room and talked about ghosts, and I told her about what I'd been dreaming. Mom went silent for a second, and she confided in me that once she was sitting with a friend, and he said something not too nice to her, just for fun. She got angry and screamed, shut up, in a male voice. And she didn't remember that. In a male voice? Is she trans? <laughs> Like, a male voice? How? But, but did you not see that ghost in the background? I did. I think it possessed. I think it possessed her, and it was it was supposed to be a World War II victim. But why did it change itself to a male voice? Seriously? Yeah, I've never heard of that happening to people that get possessed. Same. When she described the voice, it reminded me that the voice sounded just like the voice in my dreams. In 2017, she passed away because of cancer. She died in the same room, in the same house where I got those nightmares. After that, I moved out to another place a few years ago. So I don't live in that house anymore. But I still believe in ghosts, that they exist, and they are real. Hi, uh, everybody. Uh, this is this gonna be the last one after, like right here? Yeah, this one is gonna be the last. This one's gonna be the last, and then we're done. All uh, right. Everybody comment down below if you believe in ghosts or not. I do. I don't. You don't? I don't. Uh, because if I, because if I literally see a ghost or any ghost paranormal... It was the spring SMB, of 2017. I, like, I was flying out to Chicago for a job interview. Okay. It was around 11 p.m. and I was... Do we seriously need to know that? Exactly. Unless there's supposed to be some demonic thing about 11 p.m. We don't need to know what time it is. Yeah, and this animation... Being in my I'm gate at the San Francisco myself. International Airport. This looks like it was made at A storm was raging outside. <laughs> rain pouring down the windows as everyone was bundled up on the seats and keeping to themselves. I was just scanning the rows of people in seats sleeping on laptops or phones and wearing earbuds before I noticed this one guy. He was sitting in the farthest corner of the gate by the corridor, with no one else sitting around him. What kind of smile is he that? was not on his phone or wearing headphones like everyone else. Is he on meth? He, he has this phone? huge, crooked grin plastered on his face, and he's staring directly at me. He looked pretty average in terms of looks and what he was wearing. But that here. grin was so creepy, exactly. it was beginning to make me shit bricks. She Naturally, <laughs> I turned away and pretended I hadn't seen him. But the fact that he was staring at me made me continuously turn to eye him back without realizing. Eventually, they called our gate and I boarded the plane. I took my seat in the business class right by the window and went on my phone, checking Instagram and texting friends. I did not see the creepy man boarding. An hour later, we were up in the sky. Sometime through the flight, I got up to use the bathroom, and as I was finishing up in there, someone knocked on the door. Okay. I called okay, out, Occupied, 
but the person continued knocking repeatedly and aggressively. As I was washing my hands, I ignored it, hoping it would go away, but it didn't. So I opened the door to make some ballsy remark, but froze when I saw who was in front of me. It was that guy from the airport, still with that creepy grin. First off, look at that mouth. Did you slit your mouth open? Like, seriously? Seriously, I've never seen anybody with a smile that can go up to here. Yeah, seriously. Whose smile is like that? I can't even do that if I try to. Seriously, that fool be looking like Jeff the Killer. Plastered on his face. Quickly, I pushed past him and walked to my seat, not glancing behind me. What if he's a rapist? The rest of my flight went normal except for the fact that I couldn't get him off my mind. As soon as we landed in Chicago, I was the first to get my suitcase down from the overhead luggage and the first off of that airplane. I called an Uber as I walked to the airport parking lot. It was 12 p.m. in Chicago. The Uber came and I drove to my hotel. And as I checked into my room, I realized something horrible. My wallet was missing. I don't know where I could have left it, so I called the airport. Oh, wow, your wallet's gone. You can easily track it down now. Seriously, I mean, unless, like, if it doesn't have the credit cards in there, they have, like, the tracking device or whatever, because I think they make those now, um, you're not going to get it back. Yeah. Because people lose their wallets every day. I don't. So how are you going to call the airport for that? But we don't lose our things almost every single day. Exactly. And Oh, my bad. Ask them to search the plane. They did so and got back to me a few hours later saying they found nothing. Nothing. I drove back to the airport and spent the whole rest of the day searching and turning up nothing. My only theories were I had somehow left it at San Francisco or it had been stolen. I was able to recover and spend three more days walletless in Chicago. But you know what? Here's the scary part. When I got back to San Francisco and drove to my house, I discovered something disturbing. My door was unlocked, and my entire house was trashed. Everything had been broken and anything worth a slight amount of value had been taken. I checked my security footage and was able to identify the intruder as the grinning man from the airport who, sure enough, had my wallet and therefore my keys. I called the police who found his fingerprints all over my house. The only scary thing was that the prints did not match anyone on record. What? Put your teeth back in your mouth, boy. Because we don't care. Put like seriously, put your teeth back in your mouth. Bro, if it doesn't match anybody, then you're probably hallucinating or something. Man. Yeah, seriously, that girl would be probably hallucinating. For for all we know, it could it could have just been a dream. Yeah, seriously, it could have just been a dream. Because everybody has a fingerprint. Yeah, everyone has a fingerprint. Even even we do. <laughs> Unless he somehow cut off like his fingerprints, which I don't think that's possible. Yeah, there's no way that there's no way in hell that's possible. If Unless gonna, he wanted to cut down to the bone, but why would he do that? Yeah, you can easily just leave dust a bone off. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, that's gonna do for this video. If you guys liked it, please like and subscribe. It always helps me out a lot in order to make these. See you guys in the next video. Peace.